I feel like everybody has seen this movie before, but I don't think anybody's seen this movie. I thought I've seen this movie before to the point where I thought this movie was a long ass movie. I thought this was like a two and a half hour long movie. It's very, it's less than an hour long. Donner, you should be ashamed of yourself. What a pity. He had a nice takeoff too. show where we take on something from our all-time watch list watching and review for your viewing pleasure i'm your host edward prizes and the movie we are scratching off the list today is the 1964 tv movie rudolph the red-nosed reindeer young reindeer rudolph lives at the north pole his father is one of santa's reindeer it is expected that rudolph will eventually be one too however he has a feature which is a setback and causes him to be ostracized his red nose I feel like everybody has seen this movie before, but if we're honest with ourselves, I don't think anybody's seen this movie. I thought I've seen this movie before, but because it's on TV every Christmas and it gets played by CBS or NBC and we'll get to that in a second. But every year this movie gets played on TV and I don't feel like I've ever sat down from the start and finished it completely. To the point where I thought this movie was a long ass movie. I thought it was like a two and a half hour long movie. It's very, it's less than an hour long, which shouldn't be surprising since it's all stop motion. So it's kind of crazy that they took a three minute song and wrote a whole movie for it. Of course, there was a poem before that. And the first thing that catches your eye is the Rankin and Bass stop motion animation. It was like, it's like two frames per second back in the day, which is super choppy and by today's standards it's like kindergarten level but it still holds a charm to it that i feel like even all these years later it truly feels timeless it's not pristine or as smooth as anything today obviously if we compare it to like del toro's pinocchio or even nightmare before christmas it obviously doesn't compare to none of that but there's still a charm to it that makes it special i feel like so what I didn't know is that this animation was actually produced in Japan and it was headed by the mom production company in Okinawa. There were more than 200 puppets that were used that after filming Rankin and Bass were giving away to like their secretary had a bunch and they just gave it away to the staff. And I think the secretary that took home a bunch would have these little puppets as her home decor every Christmas. I don't remember if those are the same ones, but a pair of Santa and Rudolph eventually ended up on Antiques Roadshow that were bought by a collector later on who he later refurbished them to pretty pristine condition to the point where he had to like even find the yak hair for Santa because Santa's mustache was all jacked up and I'm glad that he preserved that this this is a definite all-time classic and the theme of fitting in and being accepted by for yourself is one that's it's obviously going to live on forever we still see this kind of stuff in the society today so I'm just glad that a collector purchased the puppets and actually did something with it, like giving back to people. So like I read in the synopsis, Rudolph is one of Santa's reindeers. Fawn? Fawn? Pup? Little deer. But I didn't know he was Donner's son. This is just stuff that you don't pay attention to when you were a kid. You're just like, oh, it's Rudolph, and you just shut your brain off. But now as a grown-ass man, I'm watching all these movies. I'm like, oh, okay, so he was actually... Donner's son. I did not remember them being so many songs either. They sing a lot in this movie. There's probably like five or maybe even six songs that are that are that are sung in this movie. None of them are really bangers, except for obviously Gene Autry's Rudolph. Maybe the Island of the Misfit Toys one is okay. And at the end, we have Jolly Jolly Christmas. Holly Jolly Christmas is probably like the biggest banger on the song obviously without counting Rudolph. Uh, this is this is uh, Burl Ives' original song. He also voiced Sam the Snowman, who serves as like a narrator throughout the whole tale. And he was like a last minute thing. He wasn't in, like, they had the movie, but because they eventually got Burl Ives to participate, they created Sam the Snowman and even kind of made him in his image a little bit. But yeah, the, the amount of songs surprised me. I didn't think there were that many. But again, none of them are very memorable or even any good. So I guess, I don't know. There was, it was, they were weird. 
So in this movie, Rudolph sets out an adventure because he's get yelled at. <laughs> Even by dickhead Santa, he told Donner you should be ashamed of yourself just because his son has a radioactive nose or something. I don't know. Donner, you should be ashamed of yourself. What a pity. He had a nice takeoff, too. Also, Comet is the coach and he laughs at him and he's the one that says, no, don't let him, no, nobody let him play. <laughs> like, Rudolph, it was pretty hardcore. From now on, gang, we won't let Rudolph join in any reindeer games, right? Right, 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 right? So after he does that, he runs away, but eventually he winds up in the Island of Misfits toys. So the Island of Misfits toys part, right? So he meets them and Rudolph and the crew eventually tell him, oh yeah, we're going to come back and save you. So in the original first airing of this movie, Rudolph, Hermie the Elf, and Cornelius don't actually come back and save them. I watched this on YouTube, funny enough, and, and that's a Blu-ray version, but that's like the second airing of this movie. But in the first airing, like I was saying, Santa doesn't come by and pick them up. S fans were so upset that the fact that Rudolph and the crew lied at the Misfits Toys telling them, yeah, we're going to go tell Santa and come and get you. Yeah, no worries. We're cool. They were talking to Ashland, King Ashland or whatever. I forget his name. He's like, yeah, we'll be back, fool. We'll, don't worry about it. And they dip. And then the original, they don't come back and save them. Fans were really, really pissed and were writing in saying that they felt that that wasn't really cool. So for the second year that this was about to air, they edited in very at the at the end a part where santa comes and picks them up and throws them in the sack and then starts fly away and then they starts giving them away to the children that will really appreciate them and this was 1964 so i feel like fans had even more power back then because now like the latest thing you can att attest it to is like changing sonic or whatever but i don't think fans have that much power anymore as they used to did back in 1964 if you get a ton of letters saying yo rudolph is being kind of a dick for not picking up these toys we got to fix that. And then by the next year, they fix it. That's pretty wild. But like I was mentioning, those characters, they, they become pretty iconic throughout the years. We have, like I mentioned, Hermie the Elf, who's a total mo, by the way. He's gay. We got Rudolph, very iconic, the abominable snow monster, Yukon Cornelius. That's my guy. What did shock me is that my guy has a magnum tucked in his pants. If this were to be made today, that part's definitely being cut out. <laughs> We're not having a magnum tucked in nobody's pants. There were so many different airings of this movie that sometimes they would add things and sometimes they would cut things. So in the version I saw, they cut out a whole part where Cornelius is mining for peppermint. They sing a song about gold and they want to get gold, but peppermint really never gets mentioned. So throughout the movie, he's licking his pickaxe, which just comes out really weird because it's never really explained why he's licking the pickaxe. But the fact that he's looking for his pickaxe, which is shown at towards the end when he eventually does find peppermint, is because he's looking for peppermint. So because this has been tossed around through NBC's had it, then CBS had it, and then they added a few songs, and then they took away a song, and then there's even a song that shares the the video of it. They would dub one song over the other song, and it got kind of weird. So there are a handful of different versions of it if you really care. And I know fans out there would probably know and you're probably yelling at me in the comments. If you're out there, feel free to do so. If you buy the Blu-ray of this of this movie, all the versions are in there with the original and the and what's missing and what's not missing. So it's very interesting that something that came out in 1964 while being so precious and pristine to people has had some modifications throughout the years. But with it coming out in 1964... I feel like some creatures are kind of creepy. Just how like dolls and toys used to be are creepy today that used to be played with back in the day. There's even a doll here and fans are asking why is she a misfit toy? And then people have to come out and give her backstory that are that it's actually similar to Jesse from Toy Story, which is interesting. But yeah, there are certain characters like a like a penguin and like a raccoon or something. I forget exactly what they are, but they are look a little creepy. There has been updates of this movie, like a CGI version that looks terrible. There was a second one, I think, where he had to go back in time to save Christmas. And he's back with the dinosaurs, I believe. That was still that was also made by Rankin and Bass. That one's weird. We don't need Rudolph with no dinosaurs. But I wouldn't be totally against if this were to be remade, but maintaining everything about it, basically. And just remade it to today's stop motion standards, you know, 
I don't want to give it to Del Toro because he's going to have like Rudolph be an animal or something or he's going to have him be like some kind of monster at night or whatever which is going to explain why he's a red nose or something no someone who has experience with stop motion just to spruce it up a bit just to make it with the times but still kind of maintain that charm that it did back in the 60s which is good it's difficult and terrible to do and terribly hard to do of course uh it would have to be voiced by chris pratt because you know that's how it goes today but yeah i was just I, we just need a new little coat you know no 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 3d no 3d models of it those 3d models are not great but yeah maybe like a little rehaul spruce it up a little bit make it make it cool i feel like that's a project that should be done or maybe i'm tripping maybe you guys think it shouldn't be touched just leave it like that forever and ever let me know down in the comments because this movie definitely went down in history and it's going to keep going forever and ever and ever as long as songs keep getting played and the poem gets keep being told this movie's gonna live on forever and ever and ever which is pretty wild but let me know down in the comments below would you like a rudolph remake sprucing it up a little bit should we not touch it any and all thoughts let me know down in the comments below don't forget to like comment subscribe and always and forever you do you